We've been told a lie about expressions in After Effects. We've been led to believe that we need to learn how to write lines of code and even understand the difference between a function and a variable. But throughout my whole motion design career, there are only four expressions that I've used consistently, and in this video, I'm going to show them to you. The first one is the loop out expression. This expression allows you to loop any keyframes except path keyframes, simple as that. So here's a circle with a position animation, and we can add an expression to this property by holding Alt and clicking on the stopwatch. Now let's type in loop out with a capital O and open and closed brackets. And if we play the animation, you'll see that it's now looping over and over. You can put information into the brackets, but leaving it empty automatically sets the type of loop to cycle. So if we put the word cycle into the brackets in inverted commas, we get the same results as you can see. So why would we waste our time by actually writing it? Well, you absolutely wouldn't. But you may have heard that you can change the type to ping pong, so let's do that. And as you can see, our loop is now seamless because it's playing our animation forwards and then backwards to create the loop. Amazing, right? Wrong. That's also a waste of time because you can just use a simple loop out with empty brackets and copy and paste the first keyframe to the end and you get the same result. So just use the most basic loop out every time. It's all you need. I can literally count the amount of times I've used any other version of the loop out expression with none of my hands. Another quick looping tip here, if you have a bunch of layers you want to loop, find your endpoint, pre-comp your layers, enable time remapping, and then add a keyframe at your looping point, delete the end keyframe, and once again, add the loop out expression to that property. And that's it, a very useful way to loop more complex animations. Next, we have the wiggle expression. This one is a classic, probably the first expression I ever learned. So let's add it to the position property of this circle. So type wiggle, open bracket, then 5 comma 50, and then close the bracket. The first number, 5 in this case, controls the frequency. So how fast the object wiggles per second, and the second number, 50, controls the amplitude, the maximum amount of pixels the object can move around in. And this blew my mind when I first used it because it creates this complex movement without any keyframes. And I'm not going to get into the more complex things you can do with this because I have a whole tutorial on the subject, so just have a look at that. However, I will be showing a few advanced concepts at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Now for the time expression, and to demonstrate it, let's open up the rotation property for this square, enable expressions, and then type in time and then the asterisk symbol for times and then 100. And as you can see, we get a continuously rotating square, and this is great when you want constant motion without having to add keyframes. This is useful for all sorts of other properties, so store it safely in your mind palace for later use. Quick tip, you can also make this negative 100, and our object will rotate in the other direction. Before we move on, I can hear you asking, but Cameron, what happens if I need to perform a wildly complicated task that's just not possible with your microscopic list of expressions? Well, take a page out of my book and just Google it. In reality, the more you engage with expressions, the more you start to figure out the syntax and you can start to adapt expressions you find online for your own purposes. For example, imagine I wanted to make an object move up and down as if it were following the path of a sine wave. I don't know how to do that, so let's Google that shit. How to make an object move in a sine wave expression after effects. Let's check out the Adobe community forum, and if you ever see Dan Ebert's name, you know it's legit. He is a master. Check out his website if you want to be overwhelmed by the amazing expressions of someone who is much smarter than you. Now, let's just copy and paste this code he's given us, and add it as an expression to the position property of this circle. And this is what we get. And looking at the code, we could even change some numbers ourselves. So if we wanted a greater amplitude, we could increase it in the code, and the same for the frequency. How great is that? We managed to figure it out, and if you keep performing the same process over and over, you will start to understand the language of coding, and you'll be able to adapt expressions for your own purposes. But if you want some help, check out the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. They have a short course called Thinking in Code, which is perfect to help you understand the logic of coding so you can learn how to write your own expressions to solve complex problems. Brilliant has over 70 courses on problem solving, math, science, data, and programming, so you can pick a learning journey and start improving immediately in a fun, interactive, and gamified way. 
Not to mention my favorite part, the puzzles. I love solving puzzles and I believe it's a big part of why I enjoy motion design in After Effects, so if you're like me, you'll love the interactive puzzles that Brilliant has to offer. This is not only a fun way to spend some time, but you'll also learn something in the process. Brilliant makes it super easy to take in information in bite-sized chunks and they keep track of your progress so that you can easily jump back in and continue becoming a damn genius. There are over 10 million people learning with Brilliant, so check them out now with this link, brilliant.org forward slash motion XP to receive a 30 day free trial and get a 20% discount on the annual premium membership. Our next expression is the if statement. This is the most complicated one on this list, but it'll jumpstart some deeper knowledge, so pay attention. Now, for various reasons, I've used if statements a lot. The most useful cases are for rigging characters when you want to hide parts of the body or change views, as well as creating templates, but feel free to do whatever the heck you like with it. So to showcase this functionality, we have a null object and let's add a checkbox controller like this. Let's also lock this effect panel by clicking this lock icon. So let's select our object, open opacity and alt click to add an expression. Now let's type if, open bracket and now let's pick whip our checkbox. And this checkbox can return two values. If it's checked, it returns a one and if it's unchecked, it returns a zero. So in this case, we want our checkbox to return a one. So we need the math operator equals two represented by two equal signs. And then we can add a one. Now let's open curly brackets and add in the number 100. So if our checkbox is clicked, our opacity will be 100. Now on a new line, let's type else. And this is simply what happens if our checkbox is not clicked. So in curly brackets, let's make this zero. And now if we click our checkbox on and off, you'll see that our opacity is switching between zero and 100, effectively turning it off and on. This kind of expression can be used in all sorts of creative ways, so I encourage you to mess around with it. Remember to like and share this video if you found it helpful, and let's end off with some expression tips. Firstly, expressions are case sensitive, so only put capital letters where they're supposed to be capital letters and pay attention to the syntax, especially if you're getting expression errors. Expressions are based on the coding language JavaScript, so the syntax is very similar. You can copy and paste an expression to a bunch of layers by right-clicking on the property and selecting Copy Expression Only. Then we can paste this onto one or more layers with Ctrl and V and the expression will be applied. We've had a look at the pick whip, but I just want to emphasize how useful it is. It can allow you to link or reference other layers very easily, and it automatically writes the code for you. So if I wanted the scale of this object to match this other layer, I could just pick whip it like this. And as you can see, when I scale up this layer, the link layer scales up as well, and it has many other uses. You also need to know about expression controllers because they can allow you to control and animate expressions. You can access them in effects and expression controls and I'll show you another example of using one in a moment. But first, and this is a bit more advanced, you can create variables and plug them into your expressions. So for example, we could write our wiggle expression like this, F for frequency equals five and close it off with a semicolon. Then on the next line, let's write A for amplitude equals 50 and close it with a semicolon. On a new line, we can write wiggle, open bracket, F comma A and close bracket. And we've created the same wiggle effect, but now we could add in a slider expression controller. And if we select the 50 in our expression code, we can drag our pick whip to the slider. And now the amplitude is controlled by that slider. So we can set our slider to whatever we like and even animate it. Did I miss any expressions you use on a regular basis? Let me know in the comments and of course, subscribe for more Motion XP.